Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pua, the chemistry guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss an interesting reaction, which is aldol addition reactions. Now aldol functional group, it is essentially an aldehyde functional group plus an alcohol functional group. So when we combine the two names together, aldehyde plus alcohol, then you'll be an aldol. Now of course, aldol functional group, it is not in A-level chemistry syllabus, but in many prelim questions, we actually see the reactions involving aldol addition reaction. So I think it is a good idea to go through aldol addition reactions so that it is easier for us to answer these prelim questions. Now essentially aldol addition reaction, it is the reaction between two carbonyl compounds. So it can be two aldehydes, two ketones, and even one aldehyde and one ketone. So let's try to keep things simple first. In this case, if I have an aldehyde functional group, ethanol, then it can undergo aldol addition reaction in the presence of a base or an acid catalyst to form this beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. So in this case, why is it called a beta hydroxy carbonyl compound? You notice the reference functional group will be my carbonyl compound, aldehyde in this case. So this is my reference functional group. Now the first carbon which is directly attached to my reference functional group will be the alpha carbon. The next carbon will be the beta carbon. So if I have an alcohol functional group attached to the beta carbon, then this functional group will be called beta functional group or beta hydroxy functional group. So that is the reason why this guy it is considered as a beta hydroxy carbonyl compound because this is my carbonyl compound. The hydroxy functional group, it is two carbons away from this carbonyl compound. Now this is an important point because we need to recognize that the products form are beta hydroxy carbonyl compounds because in questions, eventually we will need to be able to identify the possible products of outdoor addition reaction. Now, of course, what we will need to do next is we will need to understand this reaction a bit better so that we can understand how come I can form this hydroxy carbonyl compound. Okay, figuring out the reaction, maybe we will use the same compound, our ethanol reacting with ethanol. Of course, it is a lot easier for us to try to understand what is actually going on if we run through the mechanism in detail. Of course, we don't need to learn how to draw the mechanism, right? But we use the mechanism to try to understand how is it possible for me to form the outdoor product. So the mechanism actually it is here. Then later we can come back to try to figure out the products. So the mechanism, as mentioned, the first step, actually the base will come in. Now it can also be catalyzed in acidic medium, but essentially the first step, it is the same. We are more or less forming the same reactive species. So let us just use a base as an example. So the OH- will come in. So what this OH- will do is, you will actually take a proton from the alpha carbon. So this is interesting because in syllabus, if I consider this alpha carbon, this is an alkane functional group and alkane, essentially it is not reactive, right? So therefore the only reaction in syllabus that we learn for alkanes will be free radical substitution. But actually, of course, things get a little bit more interesting in organic chem. The reason why this alpha carbon is slightly reactive is because it is an alpha carbon next to a carbonyl functional group. Now this carbonyl compound, we know that this oxygen is electronegative, correct? So what this oxygen will do is it will pull the electrons away from this carbon. So that is the reason why this oxygen it is a partial minus charge and this carbon it is a partial positive charge for carbonyl compounds. Now actually the oxygen is so electronegative that it is capable of pulling electrons from this alpha carbon as well. So the carbon which is directly attached to the carbonyl compound, actually it is slightly delta positive charge. So this guy, because it is short of electrons, so what you do is you also try to pull some electron from this alpha hydrogen. So this alpha hydrogen, which is the hydrogen attached to the alpha carbon, it is also slightly positive. So therefore it is possible for this base to try to pluck out this H plus. So I can draw the arrow from this OH minus to this hydrogen, which is slightly positive. This CH bond will break, both electrons will go to the alpha carbon. So what we have is this guy, the alpha carbon loses a proton and this alpha carbon becomes negatively charged. And of course we get water as the byproduct in this case. So this carbon, because it is negatively charged and therefore it can function as the nucleophile in the next step. Now this C minus, the alpha carbon, which is a minus charge, can now act as a nucleophile to attack the carbonyl carbon. So I can draw the arrow from this C minus point to this carbon, which is delta positive charge. 
and the C double bond O, the pi bond will break, both electrons will go to oxygen. And of course what we will end up with will be something like this. Now this will be the alpha carbon attacking this carbonyl carbon. So this will be the carbon-carbon bond that is being formed. C double bond O becomes a CO bond and the oxygen becomes a minus charge. Now hopefully we find this step familiar because this is essentially the same as nucleophilic addition reaction of carbonyl compound. That's why we call this an aldol addition reaction because essentially it is an addition of this group joined to the other carbonyl group. So if we recall nucleophilic addition reaction of carbonyl compounds, which is in syllabus, the nucleophile is actually CN minus. The nitrile attack the C delta plus, then the C O bond will break and it forms an intermediate where this is a CN and this is a CO minus. Then later this O minus will subsequently pick up a H plus from HCN and it forms the cyanohydrin product and it regenerates the CN minus as the catalyst. So hopefully we have some impression involving that because this step number two, it is essentially the same as what we have done in syllabus. So once we have this O minus, then this O minus subsequently will pick up a proton from somewhere, right? So where would the H plus come from? It actually comes from this byproduct water. So the water will come in and this O minus, which is a minus charge, will attack the hydrogen, which is a delta positive charge, and the OH bond will break. Both electrons will go back to oxygen. So we will end up with something like this. This will be my product my beta hydroxy carbonyl compound and we regenerate this OH- as the catalyst because in the first step the base comes in and then later it is regenerated at the last step. So now coming back to the reaction involving this aldehyde, now if I have this ethanol reacting with another ethanol then what would the product be like? Because we don't want to go through the trouble of figuring out the mechanism right because under exam condition we don't really have time for that. Anyway, we don't need to learn the mechanism in detail. So what we will just need to do is, we just need to understand that, okay, the carbon which is attached to the carbonyl group, which is the alpha carbon, one of these guys somehow will become a negative charge by losing a H+. So this will act as a nucleophile. And you attack the other carbon, because this carbon, which is a carbonyl carbon, it is delta positive charge. Then later, this OH bond will break, both electrons will go to oxygen. Subsequently, it picks up a H+, then I just need to convert this C double bond O group to an alcohol functional group. So we can figure out what the product is like. And remember, in this case, because later I'll form a bond between this carbon, which is the alpha carbon, and this carbonyl carbon, which eventually becomes the beta carbon. So maybe I put the beta here first, then I can figure out what the product is like. So in terms of drawing the product, usually it is easier for me to draw this guy first. So let me try to put this in hydrogen and a C double bond O group and I will have to draw the alpha carbon. Now alpha carbon, remember the alpha carbon has to lose a H plus then can join to this beta carbon, right? So this CH3 will become a CH2. So let me put this as a CH2 and this is my alpha carbon. Then after that what happens, this alpha carbon will join to the beta carbon. So I use this green bond to represent that this is the bond form. Then the beta carbon is here. This beta carbon becomes an alcohol. So this is the beta carbon. Now beta carbon, it is bonded to two groups. It is bonded to hydrogen. It is bonded to methyl group. So I will have to put the two groups in, hydrogen and methyl group. So therefore this will be the product when ethanol undergoes aldol addition reaction. Now next, aldol addition reaction also applies to ketones, right? So let us use an example involving propenone. Now propenone, it is slightly easier because it is symmetrical. This C double bond O group, it is attached to CH3 on one side, CH3 on the other side. So therefore, there's only one alpha carbon that can act as a nucleophile. So the product, it is easier to figure out. So let's try to do that here. Now, same thing, if this is the carbon, which is directly attached to the carbonyl group, right? So this would be the alpha carbon. And this alpha carbon, it loses a H plus and it becomes negatively charged. And this carbon, which is a minus charge, will attack this carbon, which is a plus charge. Then later, the CO bond will break, both electrons will go to oxygen. Later, this oxygen becomes an alcohol. So this is the alpha carbon joining to my beta carbon. So in terms of the product, again, it is easier for me to draw this guy first. So this will be a CH3, C 
double bond O group. Now remember alpha carbon will lose a H plus, so the CH3 will now become CH2. So this is my alpha carbon, and in terms of labeling, so that it is a little bit more obvious, this is carbon position 1, position 2, position 3 in the reactant. In the product, this will be carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3. Then next, I want to draw the carbon-carbon bond that is formed between alpha carbon and beta carbon. So this is the bond bonded to my beta carbon. Remember, beta carbon becomes an alcohol functional group. So the beta carbon is here. So once I have this beta carbon, I will have to figure out the rest of the groups attached to the beta carbon, right? So beta carbon here, it is attached to CH3, CH3. So therefore, the products, this will also be bonded to a CH3 and a CH3 group. So this will be the product, my beta hydroxy carbonyl compound when propenone undergoes aldol addition reaction. Now previously, when we consider propenone, the outcome it is pretty straightforward, right? Because propenone it is symmetrical. But what happens if the ketone is asymmetrical? So let us use butenone as an example. Because you notice for butenone, this C double bond O group, on one side it is attached to a methyl group, the other side it is actually attached to an ethyl group. So therefore, this carbon position 1 can function as the alpha carbon and be joined to the other carbonyl compound. Actually, carbon position 3, it is also considered as an alpha carbon. So technically speaking, it can also join to the carbonyl compound. So what this means is I will have two different products possible. So therefore, we will want to run through these two possible products. So let us consider the methyl group acting as the alpha carbon first. So the idea is essentially the same, right? So this is my alpha carbon, and this alpha carbon will lose a proton, and this carbon will become minus charge. And you will attack this carbonyl carbon, because this carbon it is delta positive. This oxygen it is a delta minus charge. And later this CO bond will break, both electrons will go to oxygen. Later this guy will become an alcohol. So my alpha carbon is here, my beta carbon will be here. So in terms of drawing the product, again, it is easier for me to draw this guy first. This will be a CH3, CH2. So I think I can lump them together, CH3, CH2, bonded to a C double bond O group, which is this guy here. Then my alpha carbon, CH3, remember it has to lose a H plus, so now this CH3 becomes a CH2. Then, let me put the alpha position. In terms of labeling, this is carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4. So carbon position 1 is here, number 2 is here, number 3 is here, number 4 is here. Then after that, this alpha carbon is joined to the beta carbon, right? So it will be joined to the beta carbon, which is now an OH group. So my beta carbon is here. And beta carbon, it is attached to two other groups. So what are the two groups? I have a methyl group. I have an ethyl group. So the two groups attached to the beta carbon will be a CH3 and CH2, CH3 and ethyl group. So this is one of the possible beta hydroxy carbonyl compound that I can form when butenone undergoes aldol addition reaction. Now as mentioned, there's another carbon that can function as the alpha carbon for butenone, right? Which is this carbon position 3. So what happens if this carbon position 3 acts as the alpha carbon, then this alpha carbon will just, same thing, becomes negatively charged, it will still attack the carbonyl carbon, because this guy is a plus charge, and this oxygen is a minus charge. The CO bond will still break, and later this oxygen will still form an alcohol. So this will still be the alpha carbon, then this carbon will be the beta carbon. In terms of product, what you'd be like, again, it is easier for me to draw this guy first, CH3, C double bond O group. So let me put this in, CH3. C double bond O group. Now next what we will have to be careful with is this alpha carbon. Because this alpha carbon originally this is a CH2, but it has to lose a H plus to become a nucleophile, right? So therefore this CH2 becomes a CH bond. So let me put this in CH bond. Then it is also bonded to a methyl group. So I have to put this in, this becomes a CH3. So my alpha carbon is here, and in terms of numbling, the carbon, this is number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4. So my carbons 1, 2, 3, and 4 will be here. And my alpha carbon is attached to the beta carbon. So I will have to draw this joint to the beta carbon. Now the beta carbon, same thing, it will have an alcohol functional group. And this is the beta carbon. And this beta carbon, it is attached to two more groups. So again, we will have to decide which two groups is the beta carbon attached to 
it is attached to a methyl and an ethyl group. So I can put the two groups in, a methyl group, CH3, and an ethyl group, CH2CH3. So therefore, this is the other beta hydroxy carbonyl compound when butanone undergoes aldol addition reaction. Now you notice things get a little bit more interesting when the ketone is asymmetrical. Actually, we are not restricted to the same carbonyl compound reacting with itself, right? Because we can always add two different carbonyl compounds together. I can add one aldehyde to one ketone or one ketone add to a different ketone. So therefore, in terms of the number of possible products, actually it can get a little bit more complicated. But hopefully after this discussion, we have a better understanding in terms of aldol addition reaction. Remember, it is just a reaction between one carbonyl compound with another carbonyl compound to form my beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. That means the distance between the alcohol functional group and the carbonyl functional group it must be two carbons away. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.